It's a whole mess. It's a whole ass mess. <laughs> It was like the worst thing I've ever read. Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're doing a video I have been excited about for so long. We are going to be reading or rereading some of my favourite books from my childhood from when I was about 8, 9, 10. 8, 9, 10. This is partially inspired by Lala's video, but partially inspired by me just wanting to reread these books as well. I've been wanting to reread some of my old favourites for a long time, some of my embarrassing old favourites <laughs> for a long time, and this just seemed like the perfect excuse to do it, so that is why we are here. There's going to be a second video in this series that are going to be the books from when I was like 12 and 13. Now these are the dodgy Twilight inspired series is hush hush anyone <laughs> that um i loved <laughs> this is so humiliating that i loved back then so that's gonna be the second in the series but these books are a bit more pure easing ourselves back in we're gonna be reading three of my favorite books from when i was around that age i read a lot but these are the three that really stick in my mind that i have super vivid memories of reading um, and loving as well i owned all of these once upon a time and i chucked them out that's so clever these kind of verge on young adult middle grade children's they're kind of all over the place i'll have a look on goodreads each of them as we go through them i think two of them weren't at the library because they're old books that no one wants to read anymore like kids aren't interested in these stories there's better kids books out there now more diverse kids books i think these are all about white girls the first book is Ginger Snaps by Kathy Cassidy. This is the one I managed to get out of my library. This isn't the cover I read. I'll put a picture of the cover like from Google Images that I read because that's like nostalgic. Now in the UK, everyone read Jacqueline Wilson. Everyone read her, but the bad bitches read Kathy Cassidy. Is that not a bad bitch name, Kathy Cassidy? Yes. <laughs> this came out in 2008, so I would have been eight. Um, <laughs> Quick maths. Two plus two is four, minus one, that's three quick maths. 30 people have shelved this in children's, 23 young adult, 15 middle grade, five teen. So this I think is the youngest of them all. I vividly remember loving this. I have a strong, strong ass memory of sitting on my grandparents' uh, stairs reading it. Like, <laughs> I could just gone in the living room, but for some reason I was sitting on the stairs, no idea why. I vaguely remember like a party, like, a spin the bottle party or something? I don't know. The next one is Love Aubrey by Suzanne Lefleur. This, consult the laptop again. <laughs> Ooh, hoo -hoo. This came out in 2009 and 85 have showed it in middle grade, 81 young adult, 37 children. So again, it's kind of like a blurring the boundaries. I feel like she lives alone in this or she lives with her grandma or she, <laughs> she like something bad has happened to her family. Something heartbreaking has happened. 11 year old Aubrey is on her own. Yeah, like I swear she lives on her own for a bit, like secretly. I don't know, that's what I remember about the one, but I loved this. I have a feeling I reread this a couple times and I just thought she was so like, such an interesting story. I was like, wow, this is so interesting. And then the last one, is Girl Missing by Sophie McKenzie. So Girl Missing was published in 2006, so 13 years ago, it's the oldest of all of them. This is the one that I felt like once upon a time I thought this was my favorite book. I think I thought this was like very clever and very um, original and very ingenuitive. I think it's about a girl who knew she was adopted but then thinks she was snatched away from her family or something like through a Google search. So making use of the internet, because the internet was new, so I was like, let's use that for our plot devices. I think I loved it. Like I, this is the one I'm most scared to read because in my head, I remember thinking this is like the best book ever. So I think it could very easily get ruined. Honey, you've got a big storm coming. <laughs> but also this arrived, thank you when I paid one pound 80. Why are you flashing red at me? I just charged you. Shut up. No, I'm ignoring it. Um, it's signed. Like, what the fuck? Like, what? Amy, why are you chucking away a signed Sophie McKenzie? 
excuse me. So they are the three books that we are going to be reading. I'm thinking I'm going to start with Ginger Snaps by Kathy Cassidy, just because I think it's the youngest, so it's gonna be like the easiest read. I feel like all of these are gonna be a three star. I don't think I'm gonna love any of them. I don't, I hope I'm not gonna hate any of them. Maybe I'll like be enamored by them and give them like a five star for some reason. I have no idea. I'm gonna go read a bit of this and I will check in with you whenever I have any thoughts about whether my childhood is being ruined or not. So I just finished the first chapter, which is only like eight pages. <laughs> we learned that she's called Ginger because her dad's a fan of curry. So they named their, both their daughters after spices. So there's that. And then it's essentially just constant talk about like her weight and how much she ate and how she was bullied because of it. And then for her 11th birthday, she invites all the girls from school to the ice rink for a party, but only two turn up. And then they go, she's like, oh, fine. She's upset or whatever, but you know, there's people there. They go and ice skate. And then she notices all the other girls who have bullied her in the past, but who she's invited on the ice rink. So she skates up to them and they're like, yeah, sorry we couldn't make your party. We had better things to do. But, like, you're there. <laughs> and they could have got in for free if they just went at a party. But they paid to go. So, like, you know, bullying. But paying to bully. Spending your own money to bully is a choice. We all make choices. But that was a choice. And they call her... She looks just like a pig, a fat, ugly ginger pig. So we have that. I mean, I don't, obviously it's like fat shaming. Bullying like that does happen, especially with young kids who don't know like how mean they're being and really what the weight of their words is. I have a feeling it's gonna be like, oh, she loses her weight and suddenly people like her, which will be a bit annoying. But um, yeah, that's where we're at so far. You're balanced very precariously in a stack of books. Don't ask me why I haven't used my tripod that's sitting right there. I just haven't. So to update you, I am halfway through this now. She now has a best friend at secondary school and she's completely remade over her image with the help of this girl, but the girl's a bit mean, a bit like cutthroat, cruel. Do you know what I mean? Not like a mean girl, but like not the nicest. There's kind of two storylines going on. There's a romance relationship with a guy that her friend initially fancied, but then he likes her and they've been like kissing on his boat that he lives on <laughs> but he's like weird and like doesn't care about fitting in she's got a very like negative view of her past self when her past self did nothing wrong and it's like i feel a bit seen <laughs> because if you don't know i wrote an article kind of along the same lines actually um for huffington post personal which i will link um below if you haven't read that and so the storyline i think is obviously going to be that she like is renewed and <laughs> sees the error of her ways and learns to love her old self again and doesn't want to shy away from that because she doesn't want anyone to know that she was bullied or fat or anything. It's actually making me a bit sad. I didn't think this would make me <laughs> sad, but I think the reason I probably liked it was that like as a nine-year-old, it probably played on my biggest insecurities. I wanted to achieve what she'd achieved in that moment and that makes me sad. This is like, it's a pretty fun book. Like I'm not, I don't think it's severely problematic or anything like that. Um, because in the end, I think the whole message is gonna be like, oh, love yourself. I also feel like they act a lot older than year eight. So if you're in year eight, you're what? 12 or 13, so you're young. And like, there's a new teacher, a male teacher that everyone's in love with. He's just got out of uni, so he's young and all the girls fancy him, but the best friend, Shannon, is like, I'm determined to get that dick, essentially, but she's not saying that, but. And, it, uh, and then Ginger's like, Shannon always gets her way, and shit like this, and I'm like, are we seriously entertaining a grown man and a child? When I was in year eight, there was like a teacher that everyone fancied and there was like girls who sat in the front row and like bit their lip at him. And like, I guess they thought they had a shot. So maybe it is realistic, but when reading it, like this is like a 12 year old and a grown man <laughs> and you just feel like uncomfortable. Like it's like she, she walked her hips, she moved her hips as she walked away, like after talking to him and you're just like, okay. Okay, bye. <laughs> Loved seeing you. Whew. So, I just realized you've seen me wearing this jumper a lot, but a washing machine exists. I finished it. <laughs> 
It's a whole mess. It's a whole ass mess. <laughs> so I mentioned there was this teacher that everyone fancied. He set up a school newspaper. Shannon, her best friend, became editor. They want to throw a party, or Shannon wants to throw a party, for like the launch of the magazine and they want to do it in the school and the teacher's like oh i think that takes too much planning to get permission so shannon's like great let's hold it at my house because it's my birthday this weekend Woo! and the whole class convinces the teacher to go to the party at a child's house the whole thing with the relationship it works out in the end but she like pies him off so many times at the party so many people turn up she was only allowed 15 or 20 there's loads of year nines and tens drinking smoking and the guy who's taking like the magazine pictures is going around taking pictures of everyone like smoking throwing up the teacher arrives shannon takes him away to one side tries to get with him and he's like what the fuck like what the fuck oh! Something happens with Sam, the romance interest for Ginger. She goes away. He, she, ah! She sends him away. She starts crying. The teacher's like still there. So he starts consoling her. Like, it's okay, Ginger. Whilst all that is happening, shit kicks off. Things are getting broken. Blah, 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 blah. And then a fight starts outside. The teacher goes and like yanks them apart. But then the police turn up because the neighbors have rung the police. And it all gets shut down. Shannon's in so much trouble. Her and Ginger fall out because Ginger rang the police to like, get it all under control. And then, oh my God, Shannon finds the camera of the guy who's taking all the pictures, crops a picture of the teacher and Ginger to make it look like they were kissing and turns him into the school and is going, oh, he flirted with all the girls. He really wanted me, but then he turned his sights to Ginger. Da -da 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 -da. How could he be at a kid's party? Da -da -da -da. Trying to get him fired, so then Ginger has to come in and be like, no, she's chatting shit. She's just trying to sabotage him because he, she, you know, he wouldn't get with a child. Oh! And so then the teacher has to leave the school. Everything gets resolved, but, and then the, her and Shannon aren't friends anymore. She's friends with the misfits and it's all great. I gave it three stars. <laughs> I actually really enjoyed it. And part of me was like, should I give it four stars? Because I'm not his target audience and I kind of enjoyed it. But I think there's a few problematic things. Like the whole teacher thing. It's a big plot device. <laughs> like him just being like, yo, yeah, it was a mess. It was a mess. We're not going to pretend it wasn't. Do I think it holds up? I think a kid would still enjoy this. It's scandalous. It's a little bit scandalous, but like kid scandalous. Like we all read scandalous shit now because we're adults. And as a kid, you probably want to read that. Like, oh, I can't believe that just happened shit. Like, and it's tame, even though there's insinuation of a teacher fucking a kid, essentially. So I kind of liked it, not going to lie. Next, I'm going to read Love Aubrey, I think. Let me go grab it and we'll read the synopsis. I had everything I needed to run a household, a house, food, and a new family. And from now on, it would just be me and Sammy, the two of us, and no one else. A tragic accident has turned 11-year-old Aubrey's world upside down. Starting a new life all alone, Aubrey has everything she thinks she needs. SpaghettiOs and Sammy, her new pet fish. She cannot talk about what happened to her. Writing letters is the only thing that feels right to Aubrey, even if no one ever reads them. With the aid of her loving grandmother and new friends, Aubrey learns that she is not alone, and gradually she finds the words to express feelings that once seemed impossible to describe. The healing powers of friendship, love, and memory help Aubrey take her first step towards the future. Readers will care for Aubrey from page one and will watch her grow to the very end when she has to make one of the biggest decisions of her life. Love Aubrey is devastating, brave, honest, funny, and hopeful, and introduces a remarkable new author, Suzanne Lafleur. No matter how old you are, this book is not one to be missed. Okay, so it's a debut author. I'm excited to pick this up. I feel like it could be actually quite heavy hitting. And like it says, like no matter what age you are, makes me think that it might be a bit more kind of like mature than ginger snaps was i'll check back in with you when i have some concrete thoughts on what it's like it's been a hot minute since i last checked in with you if i look a bit weird it's because i've got a lamp <laughs> that i'm holding down here so you can see me better i don't know <laughs> i don't know where to start let's start with um let's start with the book since that was that's what we're here for i'm really loving it i'm really loving it so it's essentially about aubrey who we find out in the first couple pages that her mum has abandoned her. She's about 11 years old and she lives alone for a week and her grandma turns up and kind of says, well, why didn't you tell me? All of that. And her grandma's trying to track down her mum. We find out that a couple of months prior, 
her dad and sister were killed in a car crash that she survived. So it's essentially dealing with grief, her pain. Obviously that's like an incredible, crazy amount for a child to go through. But I feel like it's touched on in a really, really wonderful way. I think it's a really helpful book for children to read and not even children like I honestly think at, at this rate anyone could read this and I'd probably recommend it I think it's just written with such compassion the topic is really well handled yeah I'm just really loving it so far a lot more than I thought I would so I'm really excited to get more into that this evening this is going to expose how far in advance I film my video <laughs> well no this is going this is it's October 16th today and this is my first video going up in November which I think is like a realistic or like I think that's fair right to like film like two weeks in advance that's like fine yesterday I uploaded my RuPaul's Drag Race Queens as book recommendations video I'll link that up above or down below if you haven't seen it Riley Marie very kindly and wonderfully uh spoke about me in her last video and linked my video and channel and <laughs> She's been really supportive of my channel for like since my like second video I think she subscribed and we I've been chatting to her a bit so I feel like I know her and it feels weird to be like geeking out but like to put it in context she was one of the first booktubers I ever watched and she's one of the only booktubers who like before I had booktube I would consistently watch every video and a lot of booktubers I watched and loved their content but she was the one that like as soon as it came out I watched it straight away kind of person it's just pretty like crazy <laughs> and I don't really know how to act and I've hit 300 subscribers because of her I mean I don't know what I'll be at when I upload this <laughs> the numbers aren't important to me do you know what I mean like um the numbers aren't the reason I'm doing this and they're not obviously the most important thing, but like I wanna be appreciative and be thankful for every single subscriber I get because that's another person wanting to watch my content, which is like crazy, do you know what I mean? So I, I'm trying to find a way like on social media and videos to talk about it that shows that like I am so appreciative of every single person that clicks like or clicks subscribe or watches a video. So I wanna celebrate when I reach those milestones, right? But then I don't want people to think, oh, she only cares about the subscribers. Like that's not what it is, that's another, I care about it because that's another person I can talk about books with, who I can share my content with. It's just crazy. I mean, it's so kind of her to talk about my video, uh, but my channel. And that is where we're at. And I just wanted to check in and just say like a massive thank you to, not only to Riley, but to like everyone. Um, like everyone has commented. There's so many people who like comment on every single video and are so, so supportive. And it's just like, it's just like more than I ever imagined. Like we're getting deep for a second here. I'm under the spotlight. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just so thankful and I just feel so, so lucky and it's just, I keep saying that, but like it really hasn't sunk in. I just cried so much, <laughs> like twice. There were two times that I was like, one, I like tears. I did not think, I did not think that this video would be like emotional. <laughs> Morning everyone, hello. It is the next day and like I cried twice. I'll put like a picture up if you're like, oh, I don't want to hear any spoilers. The first day she had to go back to school was her sister's birthday. And so it was obviously like a really difficult experience for her. And when she got home, she asked her grandma whether they could go to the toy shop. And she went to the toy shop and bought her sister a present and wrapped it up and brought it downstairs and put it on the dining room table. And then her grandma went upstairs and also had brought down a present she had wrapped that she had said she'd had for a while. And the, Aubrey was just like waiting, like hoping that her sister was gonna walk in. Yeah, she was just like, this is gonna work. Everything will be fine. She'll walk straight back in. And it was just like really, it was really emotional. It's simply written. Like it, this isn't a, a masterpiece. It's a young adult slash kids book. It's really emotional. And then the second time I cried was when her mum has been found and she's living with like an old friend of hers. So she turned up there and the friend figured out something was wrong and so she ran the grandma and it's her first time speaking to her mum on the phone and her mum like answers and is saying I'm so sorry I'm so sorry and Aubrey just doesn't say anything for like 10 minutes and then hangs up the phone because she just doesn't know what to say and then she just starts crying like hugging her grandma. This was actually the book out of the three I was least excited to read and I'm 
I'm really loving it. This video has already been so much more emotional of as I was saying and like so much more like interesting than I thought it'd be. I thought it'd be just like haha reading my old favourites, do you know what I mean? Also I'm about to hit 400 subscribers and I hit 300 yesterday. Oh what the fuck? Anyway, okay, we're just gonna pretend I didn't say that. Like it's a bit mind blowing. I'm just kind of pretending that it's not happening because I don't know emotionally how to deal with it. I don't know how to react. I mean, obviously, like, appreciation and everything, but I'm a bit like, this isn't happening to me, you know? So, um, tea. Why am I holding up my camera then saying tea? <sighs> it's gotten to that point. It's gotten to that point when I'm filming where I've got verbal diarrhea and I don't know what to say to you and I'm emotionally overwhelmed. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, I'll see you soon with my final thoughts, I guess. Oh my god, I'm crying again. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't finished it yet, I'm like 20 pages from the end. <laughs> okay. If you have a younger brother or sister, I think this would be a great book for them to read. It's like a one pound eighty on Abe books if you can get that. Not that price matters, but like I'm a mess. <laughs> it's just so touching and, and heartwarming. I don't want to go actually into the ending and what's happened since I last checked in with you because I don't want to spoil anything. I wasn't recording on the mic, so now the audio will be better. Sorry about that. <laughs> I'm not redoing that first again. <laughs> yeah, just her learning to deal with the loss of her dad and her sister in a really like grown up way. Dealing with what her mum needs in that moment and learning to understand why what happened happened and you know how much her mum still loves her and learning to do what's right for her. On the front, it's like, she will make you cry. And I was like, yeah, right. <laughs> I would love, I would love, this is never going to happen. Like, in my head, I would love, like, an adult book from the mum's perspective. Like, because as a kid, like, I don't know if I really understood the mum as much. I mean, obviously, you are supposed to understand her by the end. But in this way, I felt as much for her as I did Aubrey. And the way the book describes people taking the time out to get better and to like take care of themselves and how different people need different things in order to get better is like incredible. <laughs> so good. Oh my god, why am I a mess? <laughs> I've read this book before. I'm gonna go now. I'm gonna go bed. <laughs> um, and I'll be picking up Girl Missing tomorrow. I don't feel like that's gonna make me cry. Look at my face. <laughs>
Sorry I look like such a mess and my flat is such a mess. Ignore everything apart from me. You would have just seen yesterday, uh, we went out for a walk. It was Tom's birthday and we decided to go for a walk. We walked from Steeton to Ilkley, which are about like seven, eight miles away from each other. And the walk we got from Happy Hikers was supposed to take uh, three hours. It took us five. Our trainers were white. They are now brown after being washed twice. We had to like climb over gates that had fallen over and were rusted, like climb across them, sorry, not, not over them. Like to cross a river, had to like, do you know what I mean? Like go across the length of it. Um, like climbing over walls that are falling down. Like I almost died so many times, like almost falling over because it was just wet everywhere. Like we walked through swamps, like water was coming up over my ankle when we were walking through like the grass because all the fields were just flooded. Yeah, I only filmed the pretty parts so that you think, oh my God, she had such a nice time. And I'm like, no, I was like drowning in swamps. <laughs> no, I did have a really nice time. When I got home last night, I started Girl Missing, which is the final book, if you recall. The one I was most excited to read. I read a bit more this morning. This was what I thought was my favourite book when I was a kid. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> oh my god. I like don't understand how this won awards. This won awards and I loved... <laughs> On the first page we're like... She's like, I don't really know who I am. I've always wanted to know, know who adopted me. Literally on the third page. She goes on to missingchildren.com. She searches her name, Lauren. Three three results come up for missing Laurens. Oh, no, no, no. For born in the same month as her. So born in that month. Three come up. And she sees one. She's like, that looks like me. She's like, what if I was stolen? We're on page 80. So much shit has already happened. It's one of those books where the pace just goes at like such a um, unrealistic pace the the pa the oh i don't know what i've said the storyline is, is at such a ridiculous pace like how you're like how is this all happening how is this all happening she is so selfish i am so pissed off with her i don't even care about swearing i am so angry like she orchestrates because the girl is missing from america she orchestrates a family holiday bearing in mind the family holidays to America, to some theme park in America, that she can get close to the adoption agency, which she's found by looking through her mum's diaries that she was adopted from. She bribes her brother and mum, like, secretly into, like, making them think they want to go on this holiday. So it's their idea, do you know what I mean? And they book it in, like, a week. Like, they decide to go on a holiday to America in, like, a week. I'm like, like, who doesn't plan for, like, a whole month? Uh, like, years. Years, like, a holiday like that. Like, he's like, oh, yeah, let's go to America next week when... There was debate over whether they could even afford it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it's just so unrealistic. Anyway, she, like, makes them want to go to this holiday. They've paid all this money. And she gets them to get connecting flights to Boston and then to, like, Hampshire or whatever. I don't know what the names of America places are. <laughs> they arrive in Boston and the plan is... Oh, her best friend ends up coming instead of her dad, by the way. And, like, that's fine. Whatever. Her guy best friend. They get to Boston... And her and her best friend just like run off, say we're just gonna go to the shop. And they go and buy flights to another, to where the adoption agency is and don't tell her mum and just go and get these flights. Like, like it's no big deal. And the mum probably hasn't even got like their flight. They've probably stayed in this airport panicked, shitting themselves. She's like, it's her fault for not telling me where I come from. Like, no, that's so selfish. Like, text your mom like as soon as you're on the flight but she doesn't she waits until like hours after they've landed in this other place to say we are okay see you later like this woman has been raising you for like 14 years or some shit like i don't understand how you can do that and like it's just brushed over like yeah fine it's all her fault i don't understand i don't understand bitch. I don't I just, I hate it. I hate it. I hate it. I don't want to read anymore, but I'm, I'm going to finish it. I'm really sad because I loved Love Aubrey so much. I feel like this is really letting the side down and I'm, I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. I'm done. Okay. Bye. See you later. <laughs> so I wasn't going to update. I wasn't going to film, but then I got really angry and I thought, 
okay we have to film she is treating everyone around her like absolute shit like absolute shit her best friend even who's helping her a guy who helps him along the way she just treats everyone disposably like garbage and it's I'm so angry, like, <laughs> I don't understand how she can be so horrible. Her mum and dad, like, her adoptive mum and dad have, um, come and, and they're speaking to her and explaining how, like, how they adopted her and paid a lot of money for her because they tried for 10 years to have a baby and the mum had tried to commit suicide before and she just came along at the right time, etc. And, like, the really heartfelt conversation. And then she starts going, oh, I didn't ask you to have to work because you paid for me. And, like, she just... It's, it, for a moment, it seems like she's going to have some compassion. And then it just switches suddenly and she has none again. She then finds her biological parents and it turns out she had been abducted from them when she was a child. They have a DNA test. It proves it's her, like, her... Um, her parents but then she's been having flashbacks where she thinks she remembers her mum she meets her biological mum and she's like this can't be the same woman and then she finds out she has to go live with her biological parents and she goes she doesn't she doesn't want to live with them because her mother isn't oh didn't look like the beautiful woman in my memory so you only love you only loved that mum because she was pretty like and then the thing that incensed me so much to talk to you she's literally just about to have dinner with them for the first time after like sobbing and being like i don't want to be here which is fair enough but it's just how quickly it's switched between the ideals and she has no like she has no middle ground so she goes annie who's her biological mum set a jug of milk down on the table as she reached across my chair i noticed the roll of flesh creeping over the top of her skirt great just my luck on top of everything else fat jeans I finished this last night. I gave it one star. <laughs> That's so sad to me that this was my, the book I was most excited for out of all of these three, convinced it would be my favorite book and it was hot trash. It was so bad. The thing that bugged me the most was how selfish the main character was. And the thing is, she was called out on it. People would constantly say to her, girl, you're being selfish. She would immediately think, am I being selfish? No, because this is what I have to do. Or no, because I deserve to feel like this. So although she was like called out, it was immediately rebuked by the, the narrator with reasons. So like, I don't know if we went to think she wasn't being selfish. And there was never like any realization at the end, like, oh shit, I've been really selfish here. Do you know what I mean? It was never like, there was never any recognition of how horrible she'd been. And like when she discovered her birth mum, her birth mum had like been through it. Like when you lose a kid, when a kid goes missing, you're gonna go through it. And she thought this woman was a weirdo. Like she had no compassion for this woman like being happy to, being so happy to be with her again. And like she found out about how she'd made loads of folders or like any news about her. And she was like, hmm. Mm, I didn't speak to her after that or something. What? And then at the end, she decides, oh, I want to split my time between the two families equally. Like, what other, you know, ending was there going to be? But there's never any, like, reconciliation with her and her mum. She just thinks this woman's a weirdo and then suddenly she's like, oh, I'm finally living with her. It's great. Bye. This is my first one star of the year. I haven't given any book one star. I haven't given any book one star. This was terrible. It was... It was so bad. It was terrible. It was terrible. It was like the worst thing I've ever read. When I said I thought I'd be getting three three star reads, could I have been more wrong? Well, I suppose I had one three star, but we had opposing ends. I never thought I'd be giving one five star and I never, never, never thought I'd be giving one one star when I don't even know if I've ever really given a book one star before. I would definitely recommend actually, if you're interested in doing this, going and reading some of your old favorites because it was a very interesting experience let's just say that i have not cried there's been very few books that i've cried to that extent that i cried at love albury with the one i the one i can mainly think of is all the light we cannot see i sobbed for that there's been a few but like that is up there with books that have made me sob 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 this year like incredible incredible hot trash worst thing i've ever read
and it's signed. <laughs> That was all from me. I really hoped you enjoyed this video. It's something I've been really excited to do for a long time and I hope it's turned out well. Again, thank you for all the support that's on my channel. It has been mind-blowing and I really can't believe it. So um, yeah, thank you so much for everything. I will see you soon as always with another video in five days if you're watching this on upload day. I upload every five days because I'm awkward and can't do set days because one week, once a week is not enough and twice a week is too much so that is where we're at but um yeah thank you so much for your support and i will see you again soon bye